Hi folks, I've been a busy beaver today, so you get to see three videos. I hope uh, I hope you're all not bored to tears and you're not jumping off the walls or anything. But here, let me show you what I got. First of all, it's about three o'clock, 24 degrees centigrade, 30 degrees relative humidity. And in the background here, 75 degrees. It is Sunday. May 3rd almost Cinco de Mayo right batteries aren't fully charged the old energizers there well I never thought I'd say this but I'm doing a brake job oh my god hope I don't get struck by lightning me doing a brake job on a um, ATC I know I know you guys are all disappointed in me you're wondering if I have to sit down now when I when I pee, but I'm doing a brake job, okay? Let's stop right there. That's my wife playing the piano in the background. Anyway, I just wanted to show you guys a couple of things. I mean, most most of you are familiar with doing a brake job, no big deal, right? Um, what I did was I used my tranny fluid diesel mix on the cables and lubricated them all in here I made sure this thing is moving nice and smooth right um, so this turns really easy right so nothing's bound up I'm all happy about that right cables are you know generally speaking they're moving nice Oh, the foot brake cable is anyway. Right. So we're we're all happy about that. But I put the new brake shoes on, and there's different ways of doing this. I I discovered. Because I watched Tom Martin's video, right? Might as well give people credit where credit is due. That it's easier to put the springs on first and then just kind of stretch the brake pads over, right? You guys could see the rounded section, right? You just put these right on. A lot easier to do with two hands, obviously. Well, one of my shoot, one of my springs slipped off, but anyway, after I put them on and settled everything into place, they were still dragging a little bit. You could see as I ran them through. So um, this is as loose as I can get it. As a matter of fact, it's loose to the point where the spring's um, not really sent, you, you know what I mean? It's like the last little bit, you kind of have to push it. So, and they're dragging a little bit. So I'm just going to take a little material off here and here. I mean, just, just a little bit, right? You don't want to take too much. That way, um, they... Um, I, I'm I'm able to kind of kind of get a little into the little more of the springier section. Um, I spent a few minutes cleaning this up. Well, quite a few minutes, as you can see. It's pretty pitted and nasty, but from a brake's point of view, it'll work. But uh, it does it does drag, and I. I'd rather not have a drag, so I'm going to loosen it up a little more. Um, do yourself a favor, try to keep the grease off of the inside of that and off of the shoes, right? It doesn't do any good. Whilst I was fooling with this, um, the top bolt here, it's one of those welded on guys. And even though it was pretty clean, it, it snapped off. So, and I'm debating what to do with that. I'm debating, I 
I think what I'm going to do with it is is hit this with some anti-seize here to make sure that it continues to come off. I think I'm just going to hand tighten it, so to speak. Um, and and put her back together again. I think I still got the bolt over here. Or, oh no, I don't. This is, that snapped off. So, yeah, obviously the person who worked on this uh, had some troubles. I think, um, quite honestly, the way I would work on these from, from now on, I would leave the carrier in the bike and pull off the brake side and hopefully get the drum and the rest of the crap off of it. Slide the axle out, take the chain off, slide the axle out and um, leave the carrier and the chain guard and all that stuff right intact. Um, just work up on work on the bike up, up you, you know, on jack stands as I am here. So there's the brake job, the great brake job. Um, I have the, the head of the bolt is snapped off over there. I don't know if you guys can see my finger right there. Um, probably what I'm going to do is just the head is snapped off. The shaft is still in. So it's got a pivot point here. If I bolt this one on, it's got a pivot point and the two bottom bolts are intact. When I checked it, the chain appears tight enough. So once I, I fix the brakes, I'll make sure I tighten the two bolts and this remaining one. And I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. I think it'll be runnable for the, uh, for the time being. Um, once I get this thing running, rolling, moving, I'm gonna top up the tires. If I don't have huge cracks in the sidewalls, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slime them, slime them a little bit heavy, a little more than they normally get slimed, according to the uh, the book. If um, I I think you could get five of these tires out of a twenty dollar jug of slime, but let's say I just get three of them, so for. 20 bucks I get these three tires holding air and um, usable right so I got 20 bucks there I got 12 bucks in the brake pads I paid 250 for this bike another 25 on the carburetor I did not get the vinegar yet to clean out the gas tank I was looking at the gas tank and I don't I'm not thinking it leaks to the outside world. I think it just, uh, I think it's just rusty as hell inside. So um, I think, I think I'm gonna try the old vinegar for a week, shake and rattle and roll, and uh, and see if I um, can't can't make it, uh, can't bring that gas tank to back to life and put it on there. Vinegar. I'm probably going to go through about five bucks worth of vinegar to uh, clean the gas tank. I don't know if one could use it twice. You guys didn't mention that in your video, so I'll try it and see if uh, I can't put it back in the jug and uh, and recycle it for more than one use, right? Being cheap bastard and all, why not? So there we have it. Brake job on the, um, on the 185. Coming along, once I get get the brakes done um, she'll be rolling and all then I could fire it up and do the slime thing and with a little luck the tires will hold there so then I'll have brakes running tires um, then all I have left is the gas tank and this thing this thing's a complete unit it's a ready to go out and play unit and I have 250 and 12 and 25 plus the slime I don't know probably this thing will come ringing in somewhere around 350 I'll probably end up putting about a hundred dollars into it to uh, to get her all up and running that's not bad it's a nice nice looking bike right the front fenders in really pretty good shape right can't complain too much about this front fender and the uh, 
Here's the back fender. It's not even in too horrible shape. I mean, stickers are faded, but you know, I think it's got a, um, a Christmas present wrapped seat. But really not bad. I'm, uh, I'm kind of liking what I see here. Yeah, this will be a nice bike too. Um, yeah, if I were really, uh, really good uh, person, I would, uh, <laughs> I would um, probably transfer this one to my son also. But I'm not sure I'm that good a person. If it's really, really pretty, I'm going to want to keep it for myself. So, might have two more runners joining the fleet as as actual runners, as as keepers, so to speak. So. Folks, I want to thank you for watching and commenting and subscribing. Remember to keep your feet down, keep your head up, and please remember to enjoy all your days. Don't let any days get by you without having fun. Life is too short to let them get by like that. Take care now, folks. Bye. <laughs>